Hi again and welcome. The weekly popcorn car crash. And welcome to our new interviewer, Olivia Charlotte, who will be interviewing local musicians and artists this series. Ooh, artists, that sounds interesting. Olivia, who did you catch up with this week? Thanks, guys. I was lucky enough to catch up with Perth aerosol artist this week, Jerome Davenport, at his new studio in Subiaco, Up On Hay. Be sure to check out his Facebook page, Jerome Davenport Visual Artist. Hey guys, I'm here with local Perth street artist, Jerome Davenport, the man behind Perth-based company, Blank Walls. Hi, Jerome. How are you? Yeah, awesome, thanks. So what got you started in aerosol art? Uh, I think in the beginning it was basically uh, just a bit of mucking around in school. Okay, awesome. And um, a lot of your work is photorealism, portraits. Yeah. Is that something that you set out wanting to do from the start or did you just kind of fall uh, into that? Uh, I definitely never set out to do that. It was basically, I uh, tried it one day, I'd always wanted to paint someone's face. Yeah. Um, never really thought I could do it, but uh, I gave it a shot one day when I was in London and uh, yeah, it turned out and I was pretty happy with it. And since then I've yeah, never stopped. Um, and speaking of portraits, you recently did one of Nick Natanui mm -hmm. for the yep. Archibald Prize. How did that come about? Uh, I did a job for Nick uh, last year, about in August, I think it was, yeah. And he wanted a picture of ASAP Rocky in his house, and so I went to his house cool. and painted a big one on his wall. Oh, nice. And uh, since then, yeah, we've kind of kept in contact, and uh, yeah, I approached him to do the Archibald, and he was happy, more than happy to do it. We're at your new studio yep. up on Hay and you're going to be starting to hold exhibitions yeah. here, I believe. Can you tell us a bit about what your plans are for the studio? Yeah, so I managed to get this space uh, a few months back and yeah, we've kind of transformed it into a small gallery space and up to four studio spaces. Oh, wow. Uh, four to five and yeah, a big back door area for people to paint, as you can see. Yeah, it's brilliant. Um, I love it. Yeah, but I think in the long run it's basically just going to give young up-and-coming artists a chance to display in a, in a sense that it is on par with a gallery format without being overcharged like a, a, a high-quality high, a high gallery, gallery would. Yeah, wow. Cheap rental rates for weekly stuff and yeah, they can just kind of get their work out there with a shop frontage, you know. Oh, that's fantastic. I'm looking forward to seeing all the works of art and exhibitions that you have because we have very talented people in Perth. Um, thank you so much for no joining worries. us today. I um, really love your work and um, all the best for the Archibald Prize. Appreciate it, thank you. Thanks, Jerome. Nice. See you next time. Yeah. Bye. And that was interesting. Yeah, it really was. Aerosol art, who knew? Mm. <laughs> and if the art didn't inspire you and you want to do something a bit different this weekend, check out the Hunted Interactive Horror Experience and keep an eye out for their groundbreaking new show, Shadow Road. You used to work there, yeah? I did, it was great fun. Mm. You probably didn't need much makeup, hey? <gasps> and talking about nerds, Beck, the Perth animated series The Coins of MacGuffin has launched, and we're planning on talking to the creator. I am, yes, if it can be arranged for next week. It's a quirky little animation, and I love it. Can't wait for you guys to see it. I also love the FTI's Masterclass with Steve Bisley, which will be exploring monologues. Actors will be learning a pre-arranged one for the class. Steve? From... Mad Max, The Big Steel, Great Gatsby, Halifax FP, GP, Water Rats. Oh, okay, moving right along, Chloe. TransArt presents Automaton in Red by Mel McVie, a series of Penny Arcade style boxes around Perth. It's on until July 12th. Penny Arcade, what is that? Penny or Arcade? I'm not sure, I'm only 23. Yeah, I have no idea. Local theatre auditions are being held on July 11th for Cox and Box, a musical farce, and for Trial by Jury by... Gul Gilbert. Gilbert and Suther Sutherland. Sullivan. Sul Sul I can't <laughs> say it. Surprisingly, it's being held by the GNS Society of WA. Is that right? Yes, yeah. and it was actually first produced on the 25th of March, 1875. Mm. Mm. And keeping in with our musical theme, the Musical of Musicals is auditioning at Corlini Arts Centre on the 12th of July. I think the title says it all and the details are below. Do you reckon that's going to be a musical? Just introduce your interview, Chloe. 
This week I caught up with the men behind Revelations Film Festival. I caught up with Richard Sawada and Jack Sargent. Hi everyone, today we're at the iconic Luna Cinema in Leaderville and I'm here with the very talented Jack Sargent. How are you today, Jack? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. That's good, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs> now of course we're here at Luna Cinemas with Revelation being on, the Revelation Film Festival. In fact, you are the program director. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I'm largely responsible for what you see on the screen. So can you tell us a little bit how you actually got involved with Revelation Film Festival? Yeah, uh, I got involved, I think it's eight years ago now. Uh, I've just moved to Australia. Uh, Richard and me had been in contact previously over a book I'd written uh, about film. Uh, so he knew my work and he knew what I did and then the opportunity came up and obviously I, I jumped at it. And what was the, um, the book that you wrote for our viewers if they haven't Oh god, that one was called Naked Lens Beat Cinema. So it's about the relationship between beatnik culture and film. Okay, fantastic. So, so yeah, that's, that's, uh, so I cut my teeth programming film and, uh, and art and music and stuff. And like you mentioned, you have travelled worldwide doing all the many things that you do within the industry. What's been some of your favourite places and favourite projects you've worked on? Oh, you know, kind of, I really like the Revelation. It's yeah. great. I mean, it's good having a solid film community here, mm -hmm. a, an audience who really enjoys cinema. Uh, same faces come year after year and new faces every year too. So to me, that's, that's part of it. Yeah. And obviously, it's saying that you're from originally from England. Yeah. So is, has Revelation brought you home to Australia now? Uh, I mean, I'm still here. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's. I think it's. I think that's an interesting question. I guess I feel I've left some kind of mark on culture, or yeah, made done my bit, contributed to culture in some way, which I, I guess is a good thing. For our filmmakers out there, what are some little things that you could share with them to make them really stand out? My advice to anyone would be, and this is just my advice, uh, would be don't try and make a film to please a festival or please a programmer make a film to please yourself well thank you so much for talking with me today and if you haven't checked out revelation it's on until the 12th of july so we've got a week and a bit to go yes and yeah it was lovely talking to you thanks for having me thank you <laughs> and we're back with richard suada the festival director and founder of revelation film festival thanks for being on the show richard absolute pleasure so tell us a little bit about what how revelation all began i started trying to make a break for myself in the industry really you know it's a very it's a very hard industry to, to break into especially when you have no experience so I found it very difficult to um, to get professional work with distributors and exhibitors and as a programmer and such so I thought look I'm just going to do it myself uh, and so I uh, got hold of a few 16 millimeter projectors and um, basically hired out a room under a under a his majesty's theatre and uh, started doing it from there but that was before it was the film festival it was uh, just a, a range of curated programs and the more i did that the more contact i came into uh, with really great filmmakers all around the world slowly but surely you know i started to do it more regularly and it really started to get some traction with audiences and such so i uh, it, it there was no real film festival in perth at the time uh, and um, I thought, look, you know, let's formalise this and let's actually peg out a time of the year and do something of large scale. And so that came to be Revelation. Second year of the event, I had a film that was banned by the state government here. Oh, wow. And that was the moment where it kind of broke through the ceiling. Have you got any plans after Revelation? Some downtime, next film festival? Uh, no, there's no downtime. No downtime. I, I actually work as head of film programs at the Australian Centre for the Moving Image. I run two cinemas there. Okay. Then we start looking at films for next year. And that opens, that call for entries opens in September. Uh, but it never stops. It really never stops. No. Thank you so much for being on the show today. It's been Pleasure. fantastic talking to you. Yeah, yeah, great. And yeah, a lot of inspiring words and even I've taken some on board as well for myself. Oh, good. Great. <laughs> Thanks again. Pleasure. Thanks. Wow, they're a really energetic bunch. I can't wait to get to some of those shows. Yeah, definitely. And did you do any interviews this week? I did, actually. I have been saving the best for last. I'd like to leave the audience on a high, so to speak. I spoke to Dean Haglund. That's the lone gunman and X-Files guy, yeah? It is. It's the Dean Haglund I was talking about, yes.
Hi guys, I'm here with Dean Hagland from The X-Files and The Lone Gunman. That's right. Hi Rebecca. Hi. How are you? Good, and thank you for coming on the show. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for having me here in Perth. Thank you very much. And I hear you've just moved to Sydney. I am. I'm the newest resident of Newtown. So let's talk about Langley. Yes. yes. Very good. So, um, X-Files and Lone Gunman. Right. I know Lone Gunman only went for one season. But yes. But you know, you guys covered some really cool stories in there. Yes, we did, and it was uh, including the pilot episode where yes. we stopped the. I was wondering if I was allowed to bring that up. Yes, <laughs> it's always a point of topic uh, conversation. It it's was, very yeah. odd. Uh, eight months before the actual 9/11, yep. uh, we uh, the Lone Gunman stopped a plane from flying into the World Trade Center. What did you guys think when that happened? Was it like? Uh, well, I didn't even put it together. One of the writers had to call me in the middle of the afternoon. Oh wow! Going, are you watching this? And go, yeah. Why are you calling me? He goes, dude, it's the pilot of our series. And it was like, it just happened. Oh, yeah. And I was like, what? So that was all kind of freaky. Um, so, with the new X Files remake, uh, are the Lone Gunman going to make an appearance? Well, it's, first, it's not just a remake, it's. Uh, well, actually, the, the continuation. Sequel. Yes, yeah. the, the resolution, as it's yes. called, because uh, Netflix wants for you to watch, binge watch. All hundred some odd and episodes. I will. <laughs> yes, I, 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 I don't know if I will, but I'm sure somebody will. And then at the end, the six episodes will wrap up the whole series. Oh, so it's going to be just the one mini series? Yeah, yeah. So it's a six part uh, kind of trying to tie up every string and loose oh, thread and black oil and everything. That's going to be good but bad at the same time. I know. You kind of right? want that mystery there. Right. And then yeah. if you just sort of spell it out at the end, you're like, really? And uh, Chris Carter said in a the newspaper, there's a very good chance the Long Gamma will show up. Oh, that's awesome. I'm yeah. going to totally keep an eye out for that. Yes, thank you. <laughs> but at least we have people like you telling these stories on TV so that oh, we can all actually go. be accessible. Thank anyway, you. Anyway, thank you so much for being on the show, James. Thank you, Rebecca. It's been a pleasure. Great, and enjoy the rest of the conference. I shall. What a nice guy. Anyways, that's all from me this week. And from me. We'll see you next week. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Truce. I've got plans for you and Livy.